On July 30th, we would receive a copy of the coroner's report via mail. We found the timing especially significant because it was the 27th anniversary of Brett Cantor's murder. It's the first time anyone would review the report publicly besides the homicide detectives assigned to the original investigation. The report provided valuable insight on how Brett was killed and clues to who might be responsible for his murder. The first clue. Brett was found lying on his side, dressed in a white t-shirt and boxer shorts, facing the mirrored bedroom closet. The killers had placed a pillow over his head and a blanket over his body. Paul Delhauer, a criminal profiler who's helping to identify a likely suspect in Brett's murder, stated when killers place a blanket over a victim's body, they are symbolically burying the person. However, the pillow placed over Brett's head shows the killer had some remorse or felt an emotional attachment to him. These two facts would lead us to conclude that Brett knew at least one of his killers, and one of them most likely was female. The second clue. His apartment had no signs of forced entry, and no items of value were stolen from his apartment. Brett told Doug he had a hot date set up later that night, but didn't mention the girl's name. Did one of his hookups turn deadly? Did he forget to lock his door? Or had the killers been lying in wait? The third clue. The homicide detectives believe the assailants quickly subdued him. Brett may have been held at gunpoint and forced to kneel or lie down on the floor. The crime scene photos show his murder was incredibly brutal, and it's believed he was attacked by at least two people. Pat Tapia immediately recognized this type of killing, and in the L.A. County Jail, it's known as a blitz. My first thoughts when I reviewed the coroner's report was it looked like it was a hit done by somebody who had served time in prison or a correctional facility. As a matter of fact, I was talking to one of my retired colleagues about this, and when I mentioned the injuries, he said that he thought it was something personal, like a jealous lover or an ex boyfriend of a lover or something to that effect. But when I told him where the wounds were, his immediate thought was this was done by somebody who had served time in a correctional facility and more likely would have gang ties. The new details we uncovered leads us to believe Brett's killers may have previously served time in jail or be gang affiliated. Also, he knew them through his nightclub business or AA, and his murder was personal.